What's up everyone? I'm super busy this week, so instead of a normal video, let's do a Q&A instead. It's been a while since the last one. I'm recording this on the weekend of August 8th, so any questions sent to me after that is unfortunately lost in the void, right next to all the socks that disappeared in washing machines. Thank you to everyone who sent questions. Let's start with ones from patrons and members first, then I'll answer the ones posted to me in the YouTube community tab and Twitter. May have already addressed this, but given recent developments, what is your opinion on an optimal time frame for the rollout of a viable COVID-19 vaccine? Good question, and I think we're all curious to know. The biggest barrier to vaccine development is the clinical trial. This applies to any new drug or treatment, by the way. We have to test on actual human beings to know if it is effective or not, and this process takes a long time. Just planning a clinical trial and enrolling patients can take months. When you go to the news and you see something about a vaccine in phase 2 or phase 3 testing, the scientists behind those are working insane hours to accelerate this process. Um, the, uh, the fact that we have vaccines and treatments in these late stages of clinical trials is crazy. I'm talking about doctors, nurses, data managers, st uh, biostatisticians, coordinators, software engineers, and many, many more who are working countless hours and into the night every day just to make this happen. The reason I bring this up is because I want everyone to appreciate what these people are doing and their contributions to combating this co pandemic. That being said, the release of a working vaccine is going to depend a lot on luck. Right now, we have a few vaccines that are in clinical trials. I had the numbers somewhere, but I forgot where I recorded them, but off the top of my head, I remember there being around 40 or so vaccines currently in development, with about maybe somewhere around 2 to 5 being in clinical trials. One in particular is in Phase 2 and Phase 3. Someone in the comments correct me if I'm wrong about this. Um, I just haven't been keeping up with the numbers. I do remember that there was one testing the use of nanotechnology. That one was particularly interesting. Okay, so what the what does this look like in our time scale? Like I said earlier, it depends a lot on luck. If the most progressed vaccine candidate, the one in phase two or three, becomes insanely successful, then maybe we'll be seeing a vaccine sometime in early 2021. A lot of time is consumed just by following patients to ensure their immunity sticks around for a while, because that is also crucial information. If all the candidates fail, then we're looking more towards mid-2021. So let's cross our fingers and hope everything goes well. I feel like we wouldn't truly return to our normal lifestyles until a vaccine is available. But here's the thing, even if a vaccine shows success, distributing it to everyone is also an entirely different story, and then you'll have people who will refuse to vaccinate so yeah, that's a nightmare. Why are you always naked? Naked is a human-generated phenomenon and does not apply to other species. Where do you study? As much as I'd like to answer this question, I'm going to have to hold myself back. One day I will do a face reveal and such, and then I'll announce where I've studied, my name, stuff like that. But for now, I'm just, um, I'm still anonymous, sorry. With all the work that has gone with trying to develop a vaccine for HIV, do you think we can learn something from our current situation? Could the two fields help each other advance? Interesting question. I think all our experience in developing vaccines has already helped us for COVID. Can you imagine if we did this from scratch, like there isn't a vaccine in the world yet and this thing hits us? Where do we even start? Knowledge from previous vaccines has already carried over, but if we want to talk about H the HIV vaccine specifically, that's quite tricky and a little different as well. Since HIV attacks helper T cells, a vaccine can't really be 100% effective against it. We have some now, of course, but they're not as powerful as, say, the ones we have for chickenpox. But yeah, the coronavirus, to me at least, seems like it's something a vaccine could be very effective for, but it's too early to say. We'll see. Got three for you. What music has your preference? Um, genre, bands, songs, etc. I'm randomly guessing you may like Queen, Slipknot, Beethoven, and Nightwish. Good guesses, I'll say, but unfortunately I'm not a huge listener of music. I don't particularly like a style or band either, but some that I do prefer over others are soundtracks or instrumental music, or music produced by Eastern countries. I'm talking about Chinese, Korean, and Japanese pop. They're pretty good. So yeah, if you ever want to talk to me about music, I'm going to be pretty clueless. Uh, Taylor Swift? She's an artist, right? <laughs> Assuming you play video games, ever tried Kamamari Damasi? I think that's how you say it, or a Chrono Trigger. Kind of curious what you think of those, uh, you lonely rolling stick figure star. <laughs> well, I haven't heard of Katamari Damasi, Damasi, I, I don't know how to say it, but I know of Chrono Trigger. Never played them before, although I know it is a well-received game. Usually on my free time, if I'm not watching other videos, I play some League of Legends. That's probably the only one I consistently play. But every so often, I'll play some single-player games. And if we're talking about video games, I love Nintendo stuff. 
when Animal Crossing came out, I was all over that shit. I'm sorry, guys. When it comes to pop culture and stuff like that, I'm usually pretty behind. Sorry, I can't give a more interesting answer here. Do you reckon Kent Hoven will ever be prepared for anything before he kicks the bucket? It's a silly one. Kent, having so often, has said, I'm not prepared for that in response to questions during debates because it's a catch for, uh, it's become a catchphrase practically. Do you think he will ever prepare for an actual response to a question he previously claimed to be unprepared for, or will he die of old age before he deviates from his 40-year-old script? Funny question. <laughs> it's clear that if you say something as stupid as I'm not prepared for that, it's because you don't have an answer for it. Of course, live debates are going to be harder, and just because you're not prepared for a question does not necessarily mean your stance is wrong, but it sure looks bad for whatever you're standing for. Most habits die with you, so I'm going to assume he won't stop saying that. When do you think you'll do a live stream again? Yeah, I've been promising live streams and never deliver. Not sure how many people are interested in live streams to begin with, but maybe I'll start planning for one. Usually they take a bit of time to prepare, but is less time consuming overall than making a regular video, so I don't mind doing them. My schedule just has been so busy lately, so the thought of live streaming just hasn't even crossed my mind, so yeah, soon perhaps. I find your flat earth ripping is a waste of my brain space. I do not read it as I find it frustrating to revisit a dead subject. Giving flat earthers any platform is like providing Trump an opportunity to talk about science and medicine, self-debunking. You have a great gift to share with the stick community. Please continue to share your knowledge and excellent research skills to keep us informed of science and medical front-running theories or projects. Always fascinating. Yes, I agree. I'm also not a fan of even my own flat earth content. And honestly, um, I think debunking flat earthers is kind of a waste of time. Let's think of it this way. When we have, say, creationists, alternative medicine proponents, or anti-vaxxers come out with pseudoscience, they can actually convince people. Some people who never gave it much thought or people who are on the fence already could be easily convinced. That's why it's dangerous. But for Flat Earth, honestly, how many people could you possibly convert to Flat Earth? Probably not that many, at least from how I feel. They're not as threatful, and then in addition to that, it doesn't take much to debunk them. Literally anyone could do it. So why should I do it if instead I can use my education background to debunk something more fitting, such as COVID-19 conspiracy theories or climate change skeptics? The only real reason I make Flat Earth content at all is because they get slightly more views, and I'd be lying if I said that views didn't matter to me. They do. I think they matter to most YouTubers. And even now, I kind of regret not going into a full Flat Earth channel. I'd probably have double the number of subscribers if I just screwed everything and debunked Jaronism and Globusters every video. Maybe then I wouldn't be working full-time or getting a master's degree. I'd just be making three videos a week, making, you know, making bank. No, you well, you can't pay me six figures to make that many Flat Earth videos. Seven figures? Yeah, maybe. Anyway, yeah, maybe making a second channel that talks only about science would be great. Not sure how many people would watch, but it would be fun. Okay, let's go to YouTube comments. This time I'll be mostly picking out serious questions. Since my time is short and it takes too much time for me to write scripts with witty comments, uh, I will not be reading the troll ones. Y'all think you can troll me? Nah, 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 it can only be the other way around. Do you ever scroll through your comment section just so you can watch them argue? Yes. So if you're talking about the comment section under my videos, then there isn't much arguing there since people mostly agree with each other. Um, I read comments all the time. I don't respond to them all, but I'll definitely see the top comments at least. Now for the original video that I responded to, more often than not, I will navigate over to see people hate on the person. <laughs> I know it's such an asshole thing to do, but I enjoy reading other people debate sometimes. Which flat earth leaders do you genuinely do you think genuinely believe at this point? Well, I think flat earthers who are on the front lines of spreading their idea probably all believe it. I haven't seen any reason to think otherwise. Why did COVID get so big compared to other SARS outbreaks earlier in the 21st century? It's difficult to pinpoint an exact factor. Just to start off, SARS-CoV-2 is technically more infectious than the original SARS. We can see a rough estimate based on the r not value, which represents how many other people a person infected will transmit the disease to. SARS has slightly below a 1, while in some cases it is a little above. SARS-CoV-2, on the other hand, is somewhere between 2 to 6, so already it's more infectious. But of course we can't use the r not factor itself since it's not that reliable of a number, so it's important to consider other factors as well. I don't want to get political or anything, but the way we handled the virus was incredibly questionable. I don't really want to give my opinion on it right as of now. Which do you think will happen first? Everyone dies or everyone leaves? Probably everyone leaves. How do you put up with stupid people? Like, you've seen some of the worst conspiracy theories on YouTube, and yet you are calm. What do you do just to cope with this stupidity? 
Yeah, I get this question a lot. Honestly, if you've done、um, this as much as I have, you kind of get used to it. Just bang your head on the on the wall three times per second, and you'll you know build up your tolerance immediately. How harmful are the people who push hyd-、uh, hydroxychloroquine as a cure for COVID? I know it's ineffective, but how harmful are the side effects? Yeah, so you're correct about hydroxychloroquine not being an effective treatment for COVID. In fact, research has shown that patients had a higher mortality rate if they were on hydroxychloroquine. Needless to say, it has side effects, but it's nothing, you know, that would kill you instantly. Obviously, a few side effects include things like mental disorders, damage to the eye, and the one that、um, that seems to matter a lot to people, and that people quote heart problems, you know, especially ventricular fibrillation. Many of these things aren't necessarily fatal, especially if you're under hospital care, but they can be serious nonetheless. Just don't take it. Um, casually, just don't take it casually, like President Trump is. Honestly, I don't know how anyone tolerates his bullshit when he literally encourages people to take hydroxychloroquine in a press conference. Did the guy from TikTok contact you, or did he keep silent? Thank you for your content. No, thank you for watching. The guy from TikTok did contact me and delete all of his videos from his profile. He even offered to give me his account, which was nice of him. Overall, he was cool, and I have no problems with him anymore. Have you ever considered doing more than just responses? I know Vice Rhino did a series on the evidence of evolution that's purely informative. Would you consider doing one on any topic? Yeah,、um, I didn't know Vice Rhino made a new series on that. Honestly, I haven't been watching a lot of other skeptic and atheist channels lately. Sorry, Vice Rhino. I swear, after I record this video, I'll go watch a few of your videos, or I'll go watch Paint Dry. It's hard to know what's better. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway, to answer your question, I did think about doing more than just responses. Here and there, I'll sprinkle some random videos like this Q and A, or a rant of some sort, or a monologue. But if I really want to branch out and do something that isn't focused on responding to others, then I would make a second channel. If that ever happens, I'll be sure you guys are the first to know. What do you do for a job? Ah,、uh, yes. I noticed that I haven't been too clear on what I do for a living. Um, sometimes when I see people talking about me either on YouTube or Twitter, people say I do this and that when I actually don't. I blame myself for not being clear about this. Most people probably think I'm working in a research laboratory for cancer, but that was actually like three years ago. Right now, I work full time at a clinical trial department as a data manager. I don't want to say exactly what organization I work for, but it's funded to run multiple clinical trials across the United States. Think of it as an organizer. Dozens of hospitals follow our orders and protocols on what to do with patients, while we craft the protocol, manage the data, analyze it, and publish it. I'm、um, part of the data management team, but I haven't been at this job for too long yet, so I could be pushed into any role. Although biology has been my life, I have been moving more towards the field of bioinformatics, that is, using computers to solve biological problems. For those of you who don't know, I got into medical school about two years ago and decided not to go so that I could pursue bioinformatics. When it comes to experimentation and biological studies, I'm going to be the one behind the computer managing all the technicals of it. So right now, I'm managing data for clinical trials. One of our trials actually involves COVID-19 treatment, actually, but I don't want to give too much information on it since you know it's still in the middle of its performance. So yeah, that's my job full time as of now. In addition to that, I'm also a part time master's student majoring in bioinformatics. My plan is to graduate with a master's degree in about a year or so. Then on top of that, I may be starting a new temporary temporary part time job at a bio- biology lab where I help analyze some genetic information that's still yet to be determined. So yeah, currently I have my full time job. I'm a part time graduate student and I'm a part time YouTuber. If I made you fan art but turned your stick figure into a fursona, would you be mad? I appreciate all types of fan art. I mean, an advantage to the stick figure being so simple is that you can transform it into anything you want. Draw me as whatever you want and send it to me on Twitter when you're done. Do masks cause acidosis? Good question. I feel that the people who make this claim are people who normally don't know what acidosis is and just looked up something, anything that would fit their narrative. Now, for those of you who don't know, acidosis happens when your blood pH drops and becomes more acidic, lower than your、uh, lower than the optimal range. That causes various metabolic issues that we won't go into today. There are a few ways in which acidosis can occur. The one that we are interested in is called respiratory acidosis. This happens when hypoventilation occurs and the blood carbon dioxide levels increase. More carbon di-、uh, more carbon dioxide means more carbonic acid, which lowers blood pH. That's a very simplified version of it. So. Um, the guy is probably claiming what、um, that the mask increases the CO2 that you breathe back in, causing acidosis. The counter the, to that is pretty simple. It's not significant enough to cause acidosis. That's it. You need to have severe hypoventilation for that to really happen. 
I've been hearing about a vaccine in Russia that has already gone through trials without reporting on said reports, which leads to some being suspicious of the vaccine. What are your thoughts on it? I've heard a little bit about it as of the making of this video, which is August 8th, but I'm just as skeptical as you are. Apparently a while ago, I read some news about Russia hacking research labs in an attempt to obtain data for vaccine trials. When I heard that, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> but yeah, apparently now they're claiming they can release a working vaccine by October, which is two months away. That's pretty crazy. And they claim this before any clinical trials has been done. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's not a good idea. Release any medication to the public and you need at least some evidence that it works. Otherwise, it may do more harm than good. We'll see. Is it possible for you to have YouTube as your full-time career? That would absolutely be the best thing in the world. I did consider it a few times. Um, the best thing to consider is if this generated enough, enough revenue to live on. When I was growing, YouTube was pretty good to me. It was about a year and a half ago, about to two years, when that was the peak of my channel performance. I don't remember exact numbers. I could go back and check how much money I was making, but YouTube isn't going to let me share my exact numbers anyway, so this is better. As a very, very rough estimate from my memory, during the good times, I was making close to $6,000 per month. This includes YouTube ad revenue, Patreon support, and sponsorships, with the vast, vast majority of it coming from YouTube. The reason I didn't fully convert to full-time is because of two reasons. I wanted to see if this revenue would be consistent because most of my revenue came from YouTube ads, which uh, always fluctuated. That's why now I tell people that if you want to become a full-time YouTuber, either find a sort uh, an alternative source of income such as through Patreon support that is more consistent instead of relying on YouTube ads, or that you make so much money off YouTube ads anyway that it doesn't matter if it dips a little. To meet that second condition, you probably need a million subscribers at least, maybe. Second, I didn't become full-time because I was also considering medical school at that time. That's basically it. So luckily for me, not becoming full-time was the right decision after all, because a few months later, YouTube out of nowhere decided not to show my videos to people anymore. Which, you know, sucks, but it wasn't unexpected. Here's an idea on how much I lost from that, without giving away exact numbers. My YouTube revenue dropped from roughly the estimated $6,000 a month, all the way down to a point where I can't even cover rent with it. I'm sorry, I'm not saying this to get pity from you guys, I'm doing perfectly fine since I have a job outside of this, this is just the reason I can't go full time as a YouTuber, as much as I may want to. But just to tickle our pickles a bit, what would this channel look like if I did go full time? Um, and of course, that I'm able to de uh, if I'm able to dedicate 8 hours per day to this. Well, if, uh, well, first of all, the number of uploads would drastically increase. I could go from one video per week to almost one video per day. That would also give me time to interact more on social media and potentially start a second channel. Hmm. Maybe there's an alternative, uh, alternative universe out there in which that does happen, but for now, let's return to reality. Okay, I'm going to go on Twitter now. What is your favorite video that you made? By the way, this is Cosmological. Makes some pretty good content, so check them out if you have a chance. It's hard to pinpoint an exact video on um, that is number one on the list, but one video that does stand out to me is this video I made about photosynthesis and plant science. Basically, there was a very simple argument, and I wrote an entire essay to counter the point, using a good amount of plant biology, too. It was great. Check it out. No questions from me, but I enjoy watching your videos. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. I appreciate the kind words. Do you think we'll ever be able to travel faster than light? It's technically not impossible, but it's hard to imagine what it would look like. I'm probably not the best person to ask this. I have two questions. Banana on pizza, yes or no? What the fuck? What the fuck? Do you have any advice on softwares for newbie streamers? Yes, OBS. Always OBS. Even the top streamers use it. For a software that's free, it sure has a lot of functionality. Very easy to use as well, just takes a little bit of time to learn. But if you're talking about video editing, I use Final Cut Pro X, although I wouldn't recommend it to everyone because it's $300 and requires you to have a Mac. Free video editing software usually um, are pretty garbage, so <laughs> I'm sure you can find one that's out there for like $50 or $70 or so, but that also depends on how serious you are on editing videos. Trans rights? All for it. I think people who are opposed to trans rights are just dumb. You know what, while we're here, let's talk about any form of sexuality expression. If there are homosexuals, you know, um, heterosexual, bisexual, or transsexual people, I don't understand why anyone would want to suppress their rights. I honestly just cannot relate. 
You just need to ask, hmm, does this person being the way they are negatively impact me in any way? No? Then I'm just gonna fuck off and mind my own business. Honestly, no one should have less rights just because of their sexuality. It just makes absolutely no sense to me. Being Chinese American, how much hate have you been on the receiving end? I ask because I kind of expect you have. I assume you're talking about that thing that shall not be spoken. For me personally, I have not received any hate. I live in a relatively more liberal city, and honestly, during the pandemic, I was almost never outside. As soon as I heard the word social distancing on the news, I started staying home 24-7. My graduate school, school classes were moved to online, so there was really no good reason for me to go outside except for the occasion, uh, occasional grocery store run. I gained like a few pounds but I norm uh, because I normally go running at the gym, but that's probably better than getting my lungs infected with an unknown virus. Anyway, that's besides the point. Because I stayed indoors so much, there wasn't really an opportunity for someone to yell at me or commit a hate crime against me. Although I did receive emails from my university about such things happening around campus. Not a lot of them, but a few of them detailing how Asians got drive-by water splashed on them while walking outside or being in the receiving end of racist comments. I personally am really bad at handling things like this. If you come up to me and acted like you were about to fight me, even if you were the same size or smaller than me, I would turn and run. I never want trouble. And if you come to me looking for trouble, I'll fucking book it. I am pretty fast though, so good luck catching me. Back to the point, it's pretty sad to see Asian people getting assaulted and my heart goes, goes out to all the victims of such crimes. Hopefully it has gotten better since, uh, since spring, but you can never really be too careful. Do you watch anime? Yes, I'm a little busier now, so I don't have as much time to watch as I used to. But if you ever meet me in real life, I'd love to talk about anime sometime. Do you know any other languages? Yes, Your thoughts on veganism? In terms of ethics, I'm all for it. I think our farming of animals will eventually, in the future, be seen as something terrible, kind of like how we see slavery today. And the way we treat animals and farms, in my opinion, is not very excusable. I always tell people this. You don't have to become, um, you don't have to become completely vegan to help. Even if you simply reduce your meat consumption, that's a good step already. Say instead of meat, uh, say instead of eating meat every day, you eat it every other day. That would already reduce your meat consumption by half. A lot of vegan influencers on YouTube are always pressuring others to go completely vegan immediately, but it's, but you know, that's hard for a lot of people and it isn't very practical either. How old are you? 25. You said you are working with COVID now and had a degree. Do you have any proof? Of, do you have any proof of those to show you aren't just some guy googling stuff making their best guess? <laughs> well, I can always show you my employment contract, a screenshot of some documents I have, or my diploma. But I won't be doing that. Um, the last thing I want is for people to find out who I really am. And if my identity is going to be revealed, I want to be the one to reveal it. I guess right now you don't have any proof that I work in these fields, so I wouldn't blame you if you thought otherwise. Uh, if it's easier for you to think I'm just some random guy with no degree pretending he works in the field of health sciences and Googles all this YouTube content, then that's fine. Alright guys, I'm going to end the video right here. I apologize if your question wasn't answered, but I'll be doing this again in the future. Special thanks to Fireshard, Liam, Alan Morton, and JN for their loyal support over at Patreon. I'll see you next week.